Now we'll take a closer look at testing and deploying the process from within the ActiveVos designer. We're looking at an automated request for quote process that's similar to the classic cars demo you might already be familiar with. The first activity is where the request for quote message is initially received by the process. Following that, an acknowledgement message is sent back to the customer. The next two activities run in parallel. The chief estimator provides an estimate of how much the job will cost and the date of completion. At the same time, a partner service is called to determine the customer's credit score. It returns a risk level of high, low, or review. When both activities have completed, a Java program is called that calculates the dollar amount the customer is eligible to finance. It uses data that was returned from the previous two activities as its input. The final activity sends an email with the final quote and the financing option back to the customer. At this point, the process is in pretty good shape. I've added all the service definitions, data mapping, and conditional logic to make my process complete. And as you can see, the process is free of errors. Before I can begin testing, I need to define some sample messages for the services that this process is going to interact with. From the participants view, I can see each of the participants in the process, along with the operations they're carrying out, and sample messages that I've already associated with these operations. For instance, we can see by looking at the tooltip that quote request.xml is registered as a sample document for the quote request operation. By right clicking on the message part, I can add additional samples from the file system or generate new samples based on the underlying WSDL and schema. Let's add a couple more sample quote request messages from the file system. There's now a total of three sample messages for the request for quote message. The reason to create multiple samples is so I can exercise different logic paths within the process or change the expected outcomes for the individual activities. During simulation, we don't actually invoke services, but instead rely on samples that represent the actual messages that would be sent and received. I'll start simulation from the toolbar. And you'll notice that the canvas changes slightly. I'm automatically put into the debug view. And the next activity queue to be executed is highlighted on the canvas. Also, notice how all of the activities on the canvas are grayed out, meaning they haven't been executed yet. I can set breakpoints on any of the activities. Clicking this button will run the process to the next breakpoint or to the end if no breakpoint has been defined. I can also step over or into each activity one at a time. Before I begin simulation, let's open the variables view so we can see some of the message data as it's flowing through the process. I'll open the quote request variable and the response that comes back from the risk assessment service. Next, I'll select view menu in the variables view to make sure we're displaying the variable data. I'll also select this option, which lets me view internal variables, like the XPath expressions, that were used to map the input data prior to invoking the credit service. Before I step into the first activity, let's change the request document to one of the new ones that I just registered. I'll test the process with a request from Joe Jones, who needs some work done on his Ford pickup.
now that I've stepped over the first activity, let's open the request message. And as you can see, we did get the right sample document. Now I'll step over the send acknowledgement activity and step into this fork join block. Now if I had chosen to step over the fork join, both activities would have still been executed, but I chose to step into it so I can see each activity as it's being executed. Now after I step over the activity that checks the credit score, I can open the variable and see the message that came back from that service call. The risk level for Joe Jones came back as low, but let's say that I've already tested for a low credit risk, and now I want to test my business logic for when the risk level is high. I can either reset my default message to the sample that returns a response of high and then restart simulation, or I can simply double click on the variable and change it on the fly. Now, when the activity that calculates the credit amount executes, it'll be using a value of high instead of low for the risk level. As I step into this activity, let's take a look at the input data that it'll be using. Remember, the input data for this invoke is determined by XPath expressions defined on the activity's input data tab, which is considered an internal variable. When I step into the activity, the data assignment is carried out and I can see that my override value of high was in fact used. And now I'll let the process run to the breakpoint that I said earlier. And as expected, the simulation stopped prior to executing the email activity. I'll just hit the green arrow again to let the process run to completion. Looking at the console view, I can see the process completed successfully. Furthermore, I can see by looking at the canvas that each activity was executed because they're no longer grayed out. I can save the simulation as a B unit test, and what that basically does is it allows me to rerun the simulation later as a regression test with the sample data that we used in this simulation run. The B unit editor lets me manually edit the data assertions that were recorded during this simulation. For now, I'll just leave everything as is. So now to run a B unit, I can just right click one and choose run as B unit. In a second or so, we'll see the B unit view appear and the test will run. Green checks indicate success, and of course any errors would appear in the error detail. The console view displays messages that would normally appear on your application server's sysout console. So now that I've tested the process, I am ready to deploy it, which is covered in a separate vignette. Thank you.